Hi folks, it's Lindsay Setchell here again from HM and the HM International School of Horse and Hoof Care. Now yesterday we talked about why HM don't chop off toes and I gave you a quick lesson on, on the reasons why we didn't do that. And we also talked about why you don't raise the heels. And we talked about if you chop the toes off and you raise the heels, you're going to have a situation where you're going to cause the hoof capsule to distort even more than what it's already distorting with the laminitis and therefore you are going to change the angle of P3 inside. We'll do another complete lesson, I think, on just rotation, but we're going to talk about a little bit of that right now when it comes to the next topic that we're doing, which is this. The DDFT pulling P3. So this is now a very well held belief and you'll hear it everywhere. You'll hear it in all veterinary circles pretty much that deal with equines that this happens all the time. You'll read it on various websites, you'll read it in various Facebook groups, you will read it anywhere that laminitis, anywhere that you hear anything to do with laminitis, you will hear that the DDFT will pull P3. And it does that because it, the P3 is separating from the lamina and therefore has no attachment to the lamina anymore. So the lamina attachment mechanism is called the LAM. And that LAM has failed. That lamina atta attachment mechanism has failed and therefore the DDFT has now got free willy to just pull P3 through the capsule. And I'm going to show you now why that actually isn't true. So let's just take off those little bits there. We'll leave the whole laminitis thing, uh, that word. So now let's draw a foot. So here we go. Apologies for my incredibly poor drawings. Here's the coronary band, which I'll probably take out in a minute. Let's just get rid of all of this. Now we're going to put P3 in here. <clears throat> here it goes. Here's P3. So we haven't got the Palmer processes that I'm showing you there. But here we go. It's not so great. And in here also we have a portion of P2 that's partly in the capsule. And right here we have got that lovely bone, that, that little sesamoid bone called the navicular. There it is, that's the navicular bone. And that is one of three bones that make up the distal interphalangeal joint, the DIP joint. This is the distal interphalangeal joint, the coffin joint. And in order for all of this to work, there have to be ligaments holding the bones together. And there also has to be tendons in there that are attached to muscles that are going to uh, enable the foot to move. So there's a tendon that's at the front that attaches to the extensor process of the distal phalanx or of P3, and that runs up the front of the leg. There's not an awful lot that runs up the front of the leg, but that's the, the major thing that runs up the front of the leg. But at the back of the leg, you've got a load of gubbins going on at the back of the leg. And one of the most important things in this situation is this, the DDFT. What is the DDFT? That is the deep digital flexor tendon. And the deep digital flexor tendon comes down the leg forgive me for my awful drawings, and it turns just at the point where the navicular bone is. Now, why does it do that? Well, because it has an, what they call an angle of insertion. So it turns just there, right where um, the navicular bone is, and it inserts itself into the bottom of P3. On something called, they now know, this is a very special area down here, and it's actually called the enthesis organ. They've given it a name. Now we have one of those right by our, by our Achilles tendon, where our Achilles tendon inserts. And that is a very specialized area which they now know a lot more about. So when we have navicular syndrome, which we could talk about another time, put a comment down if you'd like me to talk about navicular syndrome, 
when we have a problem now with navicular, we now know that it's a whole foot problem. In fact, it's a whole horse problem, just similar to laminitis. And this is called the podotrocular apparatus. And this here, this enthesis organ, they know has a lot to do with it. Now, we won't talk about that now, but this is a very specialized thing. And, and um, they almost think it's intelligent very interesting we'll talk about that another day we're on the ddft we're on the ddft and we're all about laminitis and we're all about the ddft pulling p3 through the capsule because during laminitis we have a situation where we're getting separation of the lamina for sure that happens that's that is a that is a definite there's no nowhere ever you can debate that that's actually what's happening so we're having a separation here but what it is believed that happens when a horse goes into let's just get rid of all this stuff up here for a minute when a horse goes into rotation so so we've got we've got the we've got the foot here coming up and now we've got p3 rotated and it's just about to penetrate the bottom of the sole. Now, what they believe is happening is that this here, the DDFT, is pulling P3 back because it's attached to a muscle. And so therefore it has tension to it and it is pulling P3 back through the capsule. That's not what's actually happening at all. And I'm here to tell you guys that that is a myth. It doesn't happen. And I'll tell you why because there are some landmarks you need to know in the horse's foot. And one of them is the true point of the frog. We talked about that briefly yesterday. Now where the tip of P3 is located is usually around about a centimeter in front of the frog, give or take a mil. It's there, about a centimeter in front of the, the tip of P3 is about a centimeter in front of the true point of the frog. Now some, when you look at horse's foot, Sometimes the frog is overgrown and therefore you can't see the true point of the frog. And there's a whole host of things happen to the bottom of the foot. We're not talking about that today. All we're concerned about today is this DDFT and why we have this idea that the DDFT is pulling P3 back through the capsule. I want you to imagine something because if I go and draw it all, it'll be a nightmare, but I shall try in a second, I think. I want you to imagine that this horse has got laminitis, this one here. So it's separating here at the front. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's put this foot here. So now what we have is we've got, it's, it, this, it's a shorter space here, and then we have a wide space here where we're, we're getting a lamella wedge at the bottom. This is where we see the lamella wedge because we've got separation. Because this is now separated, and they now believe that the DDFT is going to pull P3 through the capsule. Now here's the rub, right? There is the point of the frog. And when you look at any x-rays on any horse that is rotated, if it has its full pedal bone, because if, if it's lost half of its feed pedal bone like this, and it's now in osteonecrosis, well, it's still where it should be, it's just that it's lost its tip, but let's just imagine it's still got its tip here and it's rotated. Guess where the point of the frog is? Guess where the point of the frog is? Right there, where it should be, a centimetre behind the tip, always. Now that's really interesting because that means as this is changing angle, as P3 is changing angle here, You'd expect, this is, what they, this is what they're telling you. This is the basis of the DDFT pulling P3. So you would expect that P3, here it's, here's the angle it's meant to be in, if you like. And now what we're gonna do is, we're, and here's the point of the frog. And now the DDFT is going to, because we've got uh, um, separation here, starting to separate, P3 is now going to start to be pulled by the DDFT because the LAM, the laminar attachment mechanism, has now failed. And because we believe in the ASADP, which is the suspensory apparatus of the distal phalanx, in other words, this is suspended in its capsule by the lamina because we believe that, we now are 
are truly down the road of this DDFT is what is rotating P3. Okay, so if the DDFT here was pulling P3, P3 as it starts to rotate would simply be pulled back through the capsule. That is what they believe is happening. So first of all, we start where it should be. P3 is still, uh, point of the frog is still there. So P3 would start here. But then, in fact, actually what would happen is it would start to do this and then it would start to do this because it's being pulled back by the DDFT. Pulled through the capsule. That is what we're seeing. The DDFT is pulling P3 back through the capsule. But it doesn't because guess what? The point of the frog moves back with every single time, obviously not all the way back here, but every single time P3 rotates, the point of the frog goes with it, which should bring up some red warning signs. You should be thinking, well, hang on a minute. So is it the DDFT that's pulling P3 through the capsule? Because in fact, the capsule itself has to be moving together with P3 in order for this landmark to stay together. If this moves, that moves. If that moves, this moves. So why is that? Because if DDFT is pull, 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 that would just stay put, right? Because we're told it's gonna pull it through the capsule. So this, this is the foot stud on the ground. We've gotta be careful with our laminitic uh, pony or horse because the DDFT is going to rotate P3 because we've now got all this separation. So it's gonna pull P3. So the foot is the same. And in 24 hours, it's pulled it straight through the capsule. And the point of the frog is, is now in front of P3 because it's rotated. But that never happens. That never happens. You can look at 101 x-rays of horses' feet that have got rotation. Here we go. And you always find the point of the frog is a centimetre behind it. Now, why is that happening? Well, I'm going to talk about rotation in probably the next lesson. But the reason it's happening is because we talked about this yesterday, because the heels are being allowed to grow and the capsule is being rotated. And then, of course, we do the other thing is we chop off the toe. But because we believe the DDFT is pulling P3 through the capsule, we do something interesting. What we do is we try and relieve the strain on the DDFT. And you know how they do that? You got it. They raise the heels. And that is them taking the strain off the DDFT. Unfortunately, when you raise the heels in a hoof capsule and you're rotating P3, what's happening is P3 is here and the palmar processes are going back here. The DDFT, dear DDFT, is now actually under quite a bit of strain because it has a very, very specific angle of insertion. And if we put navicular back there, you've got P3 coming down and the angle of insertion is changing all the time. Every single time P3 rotates the angle of insertion, this part here starts having a problem. So in actual fact, by raising the heels, what you're doing is you're putting the DDFT under undue strain. And in fact, that whole area, it's so bunched up at the back. When you see horses that have got rotation, you'll notice that they have this big amount of, of chunk at the back here where, where normally it would be a lot less than this, it would be down here, but everything has been pushed up. And all of this back here is now a major problem for the horse. And the DDFT is part of that major problem. So what we do is when we come along and we take the heels down to the hard sole plane, which is a bit of a task in itself when you have a horse that has been allowed to grow heels and is compacted, we bring it down to the hard sole plane and guess what? We then have the pedal bone where it should be. 
DDFT is no longer under strain anymore because you're not raising the heels and causing it the angle of insertion to change but now we're chopping the toe off and because we're chopping the toe off every time we keep the heels like this we've got nowhere to properly balance it to just reiterating from yesterday and in actual fact this begins to thin that's the problem so what we do is we bring the heels back to the hard sole plane bring it down ddft is no longer an under and straight because we know ddft is not pulling it through the capsule we know that and so we then allow the hoof wall to grow down to the ground bum, 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 bum. we ha now have a beautiful point to balance to we know therefore that p3 and the distal interphalangeal joint and the navicular and the ddft and all the bony column are exactly where they need to be horse gets sounder because now it's like oh this feels good I'm not like this the whole time on my tiptoes on my the tip of p3 everything's come back into the all into the right alignment this part of the foot that has been damaged starts to recover properly the dermis underneath starts to create really good sole you start to get a thicker sole this then starts to grow out because you then start to get the foot doing this and that becomes your foot there you go that is how you manage a laminitic and it's also how you don't put extra strain on the DDFT and how the DDFT does not pull the pedal bone through the capsule. It's an old fashioned idea and it's still going on today, all the time. Because when you show a foot to a vet that has rotation, they believe it's the DDFT that has literally pulled it that way, but it hasn't because every other landmark is still in place and you're not pulling the whole of the foot because it's the pedal bone that is rotating but more on that in another lesson i hope that dispelled a myth about the ddft why you don't raise heels why do you don't chop off toes we've done that whole three lot now we've done the whole lot now we've done the why we don't chop off toes that was yesterday oops We've done why you don't raise the heels and there's loads of reasons now. It wasn't just the fact that it's causing P3 to rotate. It's also to do with the DDFT and why the DDFT doesn't pull P3 to rotate it. Doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. I hope that helped. Next lesson, we're gonna talk about rotation a little bit more and what that means to the horse and to the foot and to the healing of the horse. See you then.